Mr. Soft Touch is a film noir from 1949. Glenn Ford plays a nightclub owner who's come home after fighting in World War II. Upon his return, he finds out a gangster has killed his business partner and taken over the nightclub. To retaliate, he steals all the money from the nightclub's safe and plans to leave the country via ship. However, the soonest ship is leaving in two days. With the mob closing in, he decides the safest place to hide would be in the protection of a jail cell. He takes the fall for a petty crime, but is not sentenced. Instead, he's put into the custody of a social worker, played by Evelyn Keyes, and now must work in a settlement house. This film foregoes a lot of the typical noir conventions. The lighting is less stylized, there's no femme fatale, and the story has a warm-hearted tinge to it. In fact, it can be downright silly at times, sometimes on purpose and other times not. With all that being said, you might be wondering why I'm talking about this film. Well, everything I mentioned before is actually part of this movie's strength. Since it foregoes a lot of noir conventions, the movie feels different and kind of fresh. When the film began, I kind of rolled my eyes at the setup, but I started to get drawn in and ended up liking it a lot. The filmmaker's decision to go with a simpler lighting design crowns the film in a more realistic fashion. It makes the more hostile settings look unsuspecting and therefore more threatening. It also makes the settlement house seem more hopeless and bleak. You can tell just by looking at this place that it's given everything it's had to the people in need, and that's still not enough. It just makes the happy moments more effective. Like I mentioned before, this film has a warm-hearted feel to it, which often makes people debate whether or not it's truly a film noir. I say if Eddie Muller is willing to show it on Noir Alley, which he did, then it definitely can be classified as a noir. And look, I love my noir as gritty as they can be, but sometimes it's nice to see a different take on the genre. Our main character starts out as an embittered man who feels he's been cheated in life, but as he surrounds himself with those less fortunate than him, he starts to reevaluate his situation. I think Ford does an incredible job as the lead. He's tough as nails when he needs to be, but he makes distinct acting choices that make his transition feel realistic and earned. In other films, actors sometimes go too far with their character transitions. Often they go so far that it doesn't really feel like the same person. By the second half of the film, Ford still feels like the same character, but you can tell there's an adjustment. Another reason why I think this film works so well is because of the chemistry between Ford and Keyes. This is a very engaging romance with many well-crafted scenes. Both characters are emotionally closed off in their own way and discover something about themselves whenever they talk to each other. It's not a typical Hollywood romance where they have grand gestures of love or talk about needing to find that certain someone. Most of the time it's just small talk and them slowly getting to know each other. The stakes are lower, which make it feel more intimate. I think my favorite scene is when they walk down on the street at night. There's no music, not even a lot of background noise, just the main characters talking as the world around them goes by. There's a relatability to this scene because almost anyone can connect with it. Whether it's a romantic partner or a friend, we've all had those times where a normal conversation turns into something deeper. You might think Ford is the performance I want to highlight, but actually no. That goes to Evelyn Keyes. I've always thought Evelyn Keyes was an underrated actress. She has a lot of great performances that I feel have gone underappreciated, so much so that it was actually difficult not to devote an entire week to her, but this one has always stuck out to me. Why? Well, in a weary environment like this, she's able to see the goodness in people. No matter who she works with, she never seems to lose hope on the people around her, but that doesn't come without some exhaustion. Even in the scenes where she's happy, you can see the years of fatigue on her face. You can tell she's put a lot of effort into the settlement house and gotten very very little in return, but that never deters her. There's a sense that she'll try to keep this place going as long as she can stand. Even the cadence in her voice clues us into the history of this place. She has a sweet tone with an underlying sternness. She's not afraid to lay down the law or even talk back to people. My favorite scene of hers is near the end of the film, and it is a spoiler, so if you haven't seen the film, please skip to this time code. It's really better if you see it for yourself. Keyes reveals halfway through the film that she has a hearing aid, and near the end when she feels betrayed by Ford, she pulls them out. She doesn't even give him the chance to explain what happened. That, combined with the look she gives him, is an image that has never left my head. Every time I think of this film, I think of this moment and the power it has. I truly think it's the best moment in Keyes' acting career, and it really makes me wish she was a bigger star. Evelyn Keyes was born November 20th, 1916. From a young age, she had an interest in performing and started out as a dancer. She eventually became a chorus girl at age 18 and moved to Hollywood. Upon arriving, she met Cecil B. DeMille and was signed to a personal contract without making a screen test. She made her debut in DeMille's 1938 lavish costume drama, The Buccaneer. Like many starlets of the time, she auditioned for the role of Scarlett O'Hara, but didn't get the part. However, producer David O. Selznick was impressed with her southern accent and instead offered her a supporting role as one of Scarlett's sisters, Sue Ellen. This would become her most iconic character, and she later titled her autobiography, Scarlett O'Hara's Younger Sister. From there, she signed a contract with Columbia Pictures and starred mainly in B-thrillers and westerns. Her contract ended in 1950, and she freelanced for a couple years before retiring from acting in 1956. Keyes was known for being very open about her experience in Hollywood. Besides her detailed autobiography, she would often attend signings, accept interviews, and attend special screenings for the films she was in. She passed away from uterine cancer on July 4th, 2008. She was 91 years old. Many critics have described 
described the films in her freelance period as some of her best performances. So her talent was clearly there, but not the opportunities. Which is a shame, because like I said before, I think Evelyn Keyes is one of the most underrated actresses from the period. Oh, and did I mention this film takes place on Christmas? Yeah, that definitely accounts for the more upbeat moments, but there are other noirs that take place on Christmas. So I admire these filmmakers for not being downbeat the whole time. In my eyes, it worked out really well. So if you want to see a unique noir that goes against conventions and see a great performance from a criminally underrated actress, then I highly recommend Mr. Soft Touch.